Welcome back to another t uh, video tutorial on composing with open music. Um, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a pretty cool um, concept, um, at least in kind of you know contemporary American music. Um, this was an idea that that originated with the American composer Henry Cowell, um, who wrote uh, you know some very influential um, music theory uh, you know treatises. At the beginning of the century, um, he's of course really famous for uh, some of his contemporary techniques uh, in piano performance. Um, you know, strumming on the on the strings, or you know, using piano clusters. But this uh, this concept that we're going to look at today is um, is a, a really neat one, and, and it's been really influential. I first came across it. Um, uh, when, when reading through Kyle Gann's uh, recent book on uh, various forms of microtonal tuning systems. Um, and that, that, uh, that book is called The Arithmetic of Listening. Um, I'd highly recommend it. And um, specifically, it's, it's uh, made a big impact on uh, composers like Ben Johnston um, or James Tenney. Uh, both both microtonal composers who have been interested in the relationship between um, between tuning and between various types of polyrhythms. So um, this uh, this concept um, eventually kind of found its its physical manifestation in a device that was built um, called the Rhythmicon. And what we're going to do is make kind of our own digital version of the Rhythmicon in Open Music. So let's make a new patch. And open this up. And the first thing that we're going to want to do actually is make a loop. So we'll do om loop. And maybe I'll just rename this to just for fun and add an inlet. So we can open this up and pull this over and move these over as well. All right, so, so what we're wanting to do in this Rhythmicon is come up with a correlation between um, the, the ratios representing overtones of the harmonic series and, and the, the ratios of subdivisions of the beat. So like, for example, um, the ratio of a, of a perfectly tuned G to a C would be 3 to 2. Um, and so we could represent that also in, in our rhythm by making like a three to two polyrhythm. Um, and this is something that, um, that James Tenney does. Maybe I'll just make a little comment. Um, James Tenney does this in an amazing piece uh, I, I got to study for a little bit called um, uh, the spectral uh, Canon, or maybe it's just one N, I forget, for Conlon uh, Nan Caro. I think it's just one N. Anyways, it's this amazing piece. I'd, I'd recommend that you, uh, you listen to it and, and read a little bit about how it's constructed. But that's the basic principle behind that, that piece, and that's what we we're, what we're going to try and do here. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a for loop and connect it here. So um, on the outside of this loop, you know, out here, we'll, we'll make an integer like 12. And what we're basically going to be telling this loop is, um, you know, make, uh, make 12 overtones of the harmonic series, and then, um, you know, cycle through making up to 12, uh, you know, divisions of the beat as well. And then, and then pair, those, um, pair those various types of uh, rhythms and harmonies. Okay, so now we're going to add a, a special object um, from the OM Tristan library. And if you don't have that, I really encourage you to download um, the OM, OM Tristan library. Um, just so you can see here, where is it? I've probably got too many libraries loaded at once. There we go, OM Tristan, um, right there. And uh, this is an object that will produce um, a harmonic series. And so we're going to set this up. 
we're going to set this up like so. So we've got, yeah, 361 one. And just uh, if you're curious, go ahead and cl uh, click that and hit D. And uh, this will show you some documentation um, as, as well about what's going on um, with this patch. But for now, what I'm going to do is just connect um, the output of the, the for loop to both of these, begin and end. Um, great. And then I'm going to go down here and make a voice object. And this harmonic series um, producing object is going to be the input for our pitch material in this voice. So we'll go ahead and connect it there. And uh, that'll be the pitch material in that chords inlet. Awesome. So we've got that. Um, we've got that set now. And now we're just going to add one more little patch um, inside this loop to uh, kind of tie everything together here. So um, let's go ahead and make. Uh, is that what we want to do? Yeah, we'll go ahead and make a new patch, internal patch. And um, uh, this will be, let's just call it notes per beat. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and click on this and begin editing. And we're going to make two inlets. Um, one of them will be for um, pitch, or let's just call it notes. And then this one will be for uh, beats. Alrighty, so what we want to do now is um, we want to make a new little OM divide uh, object. And we're going to connect this to the right inlet. And uh, whatever our input is, we're going to um, divide the number 4 by that input. Um, and then over here, let's go ahead and make a multiply object, um, om asterisk, just like that. And we're going to take um, this output, notes, connect it up there, connect this up over here, and leave that as such. Um, then we're going to do one more om divide over here. And we're going to take the output of our multiply. Um, and then have one, so basically we're taking the, the reciprocal of, of that result. Um, then we're going to add one more object down here, repeat n. And so this object does exactly um, you know, what, you, what you might expect. It's going to take whatever input I have over here and repeat it how ma however many times I tell, tell it to do that, n times. Um, so we've got that, and we're going to go ahead and type in uh, make tree so that we can convert these into, uh, into rhythmic material. And our default time signature will be 4-4, four, four, and that's great. Um, we'll, leave, we'll leave that and rig this up to an output. And we can move this all over, tidy up the patch. And now we'll have some rhythmic material. And again, what this is doing is um, it's, it's going to determine a way of divvying up, um, divvying up the notes per beat that will correspond to, um, to, to our kind of harmonic series information as we go. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. We'll move this over here, type in that, and let's go ahead and set this inlet to the number four and connect that there. And finally, the last thing we're going to do is um, add a little collect object. And this collect object is not going to connect to either the um, rhythm information or the pitch information. It's going to collect this voice object itself. itself. It's taking this whole object as a result. And so I'm connecting it to um, to the leftmost outlet. And if you if you hover uh, you know a patch cable over, you'll see that it, that the corresponding inlet is actually labeled as self, um, which means this is passing itself as an object. Alrighty, so now we can connect up um, our each time over here on the left, 
and finally over here on the right and pull this over and we've got a nice little little loop going on okay so if I hover over here and evaluate the only thing we're gonna see is a whole bunch of voice objects this is open music's rep representation of the voice objects that we saw in the patch here that we're that we're passing as a, as a you know self through collect um, this is where they're going uh, and this is just a list kind of pointing to the representations of those objects in open music so this isn't really helpful you know we're not we're not getting anything from this um, so what we need to do now to be able to to really work with this is add a new type of uh, score object called a poly um, you know poly for polyphonic um, and a poly is just basically a library of voice objects so in fact this is perfect we're passing from Rhythmicon this loop a list of voice objects um, that will that will be represented here in this poly object so I'm gonna go ahead and click evaluate and open this up and we get this really wacky result um, so maybe one thing I'll do is start by changing some clefs if I can uh, like so let's turn that into an F clef awesome now let's turn this one into an F clef too okay so what is this doing this is um, uh, this is setting up basically you know an overtone uh, you know series kind of correlation so this you know this all is basically one measure and our fundamental um, you know if we're if we're representing the harmonic series going down these uh, these systems the fundamental is one and this is the first overtone which is going to be uh, you know resonating at a ratio of two to one and so we've got two attacks in the same time as the one attack of the fundamental um, by the same token this G when tuned uh, you know purely is going to be resonating at a, at a rate of three to one relative to uh, to the fundamental so we've got basically a, you know a, a large triplet figure and it's kind of hard to see you know the, the notation in open music makes it such that it can be tricky to identify that as, as basically a four beat long triplet but that's what it is um, when we get to the, f the fourth overtone and we've got four attacks in the measure um, fifth overtone we've got five attacks and this is great but one one problem is it actually would make more sense to read this going up right because these are lower pitches so let's go ahead and close this and go back to our rhythmicon and we're gonna add one last little object that will that will fix this so we're gonna just type in reverse and so once our loop has collected all of these voice objects it's gonna take that list and flip it backwards so that the lowest ones um, will you know will be at the bottom of our of our list so let's reevaluate the poly and this looks much better absolutely we've got um, we've got now these uh, these lower overtones now at the bottom of the score and we can re um, reassign the clefs and now we can really see as we go um, you know exactly the the harmonic so here's the eighth harmonic for example with eight attacks uh, to the measure and the cool thing is you can you know you can really go pretty crazy if you want so if I type in 36 up here and then go ahead and evaluate this poly I'm gonna get just a ginormous um, ginormous score here uh, all the way up to the 36th harmonic represented rhythmically um, and it you know it just goes all the way down all the way back to <laughs> back to our fundamental um, let me see if I can print this actually this may be an easier way to to see let's see about opening it up in preview oh man it won't even let me okay well I think I think maybe it's too big a too big a document. Yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> this is great. Um, anyways, you get the idea. If you wanted, you could export this as uh, 
as an XML or as a MIDI sequence. Um, uh, I, you know, I'd encourage you too to take a listen to the the playback. Um, it's really pretty remarkable um, to to hear kind of the correlation between between rhythm and overtones of the harmonic series. So, anyways, this is uh, this is our Rhythmicon, and uh, you know, it's I don't, I don't know if it's uh, you know, all that particularly useful for you, but it's uh, just another example of some of the amazing stuff you can do with open music, um, you know, making these correlations between pitch and rhythmic material. So um, yeah, I hope, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, this was, uh, if not, you know, really uh, uh, useful for you, at least um, somewhat interesting. Um, I'd again encourage you to look at um, the thoughts and ideas of Henry Cowell, uh, Conlon Nancaro, of course, um, James Tenney, Ben Johnston. Um, and as always, if you have questions, comments, responses, or ways to improve this patch, go ahead and leave a comment below. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. I uh, can't wait to join you again next time.